Hello, I'm Dan from Edamo Electric Bikes and today we've come to do a full review of the new Load 460 from Reese Muller. So looking at the new Load 4 from Reese & Muller, one of the biggest changes that we've got is the changeover to the smart system. So Bosch released a repackaged version of the um, 85 Newton meter motor, the Gen 4 motor, into this new smart system, which has given us a new combination of batteries and screens. And that's probably gonna be the biggest change that we've seen as we've gone from the old load to the new load four. But what I'm gonna run, do is run through the whole of the bike, all the different options that are available for you and help you choose your perfect bike. So looking at the bike that we've got here today, this is probably one of the most popular bikes that we have for um, going out and exploring with the dog, going camping and doing all that sort of fun stuff. It's the smaller of the two load bikes that are available. This is a load 60. There is also a load 75, which we'll come to in a couple of months time when we do a full review of that bike. Um, the main difference between the two bikes this one has a load base here of 60 centimetres compared to the 75 has a load base of 75 centimetres. Looking at the bike, this colour is the most popular colour. It's called Tundra Grey. Um, it's actually like a greeny sage sort of colour. Most of the bikes we sell have this colour on it. The other option for a load 60 is then the cold grey matte. One of the most popular colours, which you can't get on the Load 60, is now the peanut mat, which comes on the Load 75. Again, we've got one of those coming in and we'll talk through that in more detail. So this colour, Tundra Grey, only available on the Load 60 and it is probably the most popular colour you can get. When looking at the bike, the combination of gears that are available are pretty straightforward. So three different types of gearing. We've got the Touring, the chain and cassette version, which is an 11 speed um, with a 50 tooth uh, cassette on the back. We can have an Enviola hub called a Vario uh, with a belt drive, or we can have the roll-off hub with a belt drive, the E14 um, gearbox in the back there, electronic uh, shift, ele electronic shift gears, um, which again is the most popular option on this bike. We've gone for today the Touring one. This is our demo bike that we have in store. It's really, really good. It just needs a little bit of maintenance and it's absolutely perfect. Price-wise on these bikes, we're starting from anywhere from... Base model is... $6,869. So pricing on the uh, Load 60 starts at about $6,900 for the chain and cassette version we've got here, and then goes up to $9,100 for the roll-off version with the high speed. Now high speed is not something that is legal in the UK, so if you decided to go for the high speed bike, you should really register it, and it will have to be a moped, so it's gonna have to have a number plate on the back there. Um, but we don't tend to see many of those. Most people that buy them buy the standard bikes. So there's three different specifications, touring, vario, or roll-off. Starting at the front of the bike, let's have a quick think about what we've got. Now this one, we've gone for the GX pack. So we've got the off-road tires. There's two options, you can have road or off-road. The road tires are fitted with a smooth tire. I'm looking at uh, Rufus's bike, it's not got them on there. This is knobbly tires as well. Um, they're Schwalbe, probably Moto X tires, I think, on the, the road version of it. And then on the off-road, they're Smart Sams, I believe, which are a slightly more aggressive um, tr um, tread. And what's nice about this bike is you kind of sort of look at it and say it's a cargo bike. You know, cargo bikes maybe aren't made for riding off-road. Read on uh, Reese Muller's website, it says this bike is for riding gravel tracks, forest tracks, and doing those off-road types of stuff. Maybe not as much off-road as we've seen Rufus do on his bike sometimes, um, but they are definitely not just for riding around on the road. A nice thing, I guess, about the uh, loads is in your head when you think cargo bike, you think these big ones with these buckets on the front with space to put everything in. Reese Muller do make those, they're called Packsters, um, but these are far more sleek, uh, far more like a bicycle to ride and far more capable when you wanna go and do multi-day trips off-road, camping gear, dogs and all that sort of stuff. So two options, you can either go for the road tire or the off-road tire. If you go for the off-road tire, it's not gonna be as efficient on the road, so you're not gonna get as many uh, miles. So if you're gonna, gonna stick to the road the whole time, go for the road tires. Um, 
My preference, I own one of these at home. Uh, we went for the GX tires just because we are badly behaved and we don't really like spending too much time on the road. And I know that Rufus has done exactly the same on his and he's gone for GX tires as well. Now, nice thing about this bike, we have got this year a new fork on the front here. So this is a Suntour Moby 34 uh, fork that's sitting on there. It's just a newer version, but it's really, really nice. The older versions had chrome on them and the chrome over time started to get pitted and, and wore away. This one has got a black finish on it. Um, it's far more similar to all the other bikes in the range. Um, I think it's just a little bit higher specification and we're hoping this is gonna last an awful lot longer. So that is a nice upgrade, the new fork that we've got on there. You'll notice on this bike as well, the steering. Some cargo bikes like the recent Muller Paxter or the Urban Arrows or other bikes that are out there, they use um, a cable steer to do the steering. Cable steer dance, that's called. Um, and it's got two cables that pull um, or either side of a wheel here to turn it. These loads um, have a bar that runs, I don't know if you can see, from the bottom down here, out to the front to push the wheel and it means the steering on these is so good it's really lovely to ride it feels like a normal bike once you've got over the fact that your wheel is out there instead of here and you stop staring at it to ride this is really smooth and easy going whereas some of the um, bigger cargo cargo bikes can feel a little bit more odd a little bit more clumsy to ride this just feels like a normal bike I'm going to come to the, all the cargo area in a minute because there's a lot of options for that. Um, I'll show you this one now is just a tarpaul and high sides, but there's loads more. I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, moving back and looking at the handlebars on this bike, really nice thing about this bike is it's one size fits all. So we don't have to worry about all sorts of different sizing. And the reason that we can have that one size fits all is we've got a couple of adjustments on the handlebars. First, if I let go of this and open it up, we can change the angle that the handlebars are actually at. So there's three different settings. One, two, and three. Uh, put it in the middle one, and then lock that down. So you can set your handlebars at any angle, so larger riders can push them forwards. And then on top of that, there's another setting here where you can change the height of your handlebars. I think it's about six different settings on that. Clicks into place, and then you can close these up again. So there's lots of adjustments that you can make to your handlebars to get those in the right position. And then on top of that, you've got this enormous seat post here. So that's the maximum extension about there, all the way down to the lowest down there. So this bike is suitable for, for anybody, I think it's from about five foot all the way up to six and a half foot, all fitting on one bike. So if you're gonna have this as one bike for a family, this is gonna work really, really well. So if two people are gonna share it, but equally, you're not gonna have to worry about what size bike you're gonna buy because it's just this one. So it makes my life nice and easy. I'm quite happy with that. Moving up onto the handlebars um, and looking in a little bit more depth as to the screens and things that we've got. This bike here is fitted with the um, Kiox 300 display on it. The Kiox 500 is gonna be an option as well. And the Kiox 300 is a little um, LED screen, color screen that gives you all the information that you want. And it's paired with the Bosch LED remote on the side. So um, it's pretty much standard now on all the smart system bikes, we get this, uh, LED remote. What I think we're going to find with this bike is because it's kind of used for adventure riding and going out places you probably haven't been, you're probably going to be lost half the time, you can take this um, Kiox 300 off and you can actually put a smartphone grip on here. When you've got the smartphone grip it then uses your phone with the um, Bosch flow app that comes for the smart system and then you can have a sat nav integrated into it. So you can pair that up with something like Komoot, get all your favorite routes and then disappear on this right bike for a couple of days to go and do your ride. So we'll probably see that coming as an option. Rees and Muller don't offer this smartphone grip as standard and from the factory. So you just need to give us a call, let us know that's what you want and we'll put it on there. We'll purchase it from Bosch and do it as an upgrade for you. Next thing to look at, um, obviously hydraulic brakes on these. Now, on most of the Rees and Muller bikes, they will be providing Magura brakes. On this, we've got Tektro brakes that are cargo bike specific. So more powerful um, brakes for more stopping power because this bike weighs about 36 kilograms. It's not a light bike. So when you launch this off the hit side of the hill at 40 mile an hour, you need some significant stopping power. So these are TRP brakes that are on here specific for cargo bikes. And it's what Reese and Muller use across the range and for all their cargo bikes. 
also um lights so you can see at the front up there we've got a supernova m99 mini light uh, nice big light plenty of light coming out the back and on the back here we've got a supernova um light with leds in it as well um it, on the front, got a main beam and dipped, so you've got a little button on the handlebar for that. So riding through the night off-road through the forest is not going to be a problem at all. And on the rear, that we've got the, the brake lights as well. So as soon as you grab either one of the levers, you're going to see those light up as well. So really, really nice lights, and they're powered off of the battery that we've got. Gearing, this is a chain cassette, so we're talking about thumb shift, push down for um, gears and click to come back up again. The other two options are an Enviolo hub where we've got a twist um, shift and we've got a roll-off hub with a press for the electronic shift that's on there. Are you happy that it's raining? I hadn't really noticed it. I'm all right with the cameras. Okay, cool. I will carry on and if it just pisses down on me, it just pisses down on me. Okay, so the next really big thing about this bike, and this is probably the part I'm most excited about um, on this bike. These bikes are heavy, so they use more power. Um, you're gonna load stuff into them. There's gonna be a lot of kit in here, so the bike's gonna be even heavier again. So when you're thinking about how far you're gonna get on a battery, it's much uh, reduced compared to normal. So on the old bike, it used to be a 500 watt hour battery here. You could go for that one battery. On a normal bike, that would be good for 50 miles at best, worst 25 miles. Um, on a cargo bike, we could push that down even lower. So we would find that people would go as standard a dual battery. And the old bike used to be dual battery with a thousand and watt hours so two 500 watt hour batteries on this new load 4 the single battery is 725 watt hours so already we've got a step up and we're getting near what the double battery used to be with the double battery version it is another 725 watt hour we've got a total of 1450 watt hours essentially this bike is equivalent to having the old bike with three batteries on it instead of two. So that's going to be a really nice upgrade on this bike and um, knowing that you can ride it in turbo all day long, not that we'd obviously do that because that's a waste of battery, that's terrible. Uh, ride it in turbo all day long, no worries at all and you can carry as much as you want and you know, so not a lot more range. So that's a great, great upgrade uh, there from Reese and Muller and from Bosch obviously. Now, a load. One of the most special things about a load from Reese and Muller is that these cargo bikes are full suspension. So it's normal that you'll see suspension on the front of the bikes, but with the load, we've got this rear suspension as well. And the rear suspension works really well to sit the bike into the ground at high speed. So if you're traveling um, off-road or on a gravelly path, the last thing that you want is the back end of your bike skipping around and bouncing around, especially when you're on something bigger like a cargo bike, it can be hard to hold on to. With the full suspension, that's pushing your rear wheel into the ground all the time and it means you can ride on some of the more uneven ground with no worry at all so full suspension uh, load for exactly the same as the, uh, the old loads but it makes the ride and the experience of this bike superb um, and i wouldn't have a cargo bike without it so definitely, definitely, this is one of the high points. Moving backwards on the bike a little bit further, um, as standard, we're getting this um, Abbas Shield uh, lock. It's a type of lock that has a bolt that drops through the wheel and it will stop somebody riding the bike off. Now, on a bike like this, that is absolutely brilliant because if somebody can't ride it off, it's highly unlikely they're gonna pick it up and run with it because it's such a large bike. So that is a really, really good lock as standard. You can have the option to have the little bag that goes under here that holds the chain extension. That chain extension plugs into the side and then you can lock your bike onto something as well. That's about 47 pounds for extra for that um, option if you, should go, if you should choose to go for it. On this bike that we've got, we've got the version that doesn't have the rear rack. So the rear rack is optional unless you go for the high speed bike at which it becomes standard and the reason it's standard is it's the rear rack that is used to hold uh, the little number plate or tag that goes on the back. Um, nice thing about that rear rack is it bolts directly onto the frame so the weight you apply to that rear rack is then transferred back into the frame which means this rear swing arm is completely independent and the wheel can quite happily move free without the weight of your bags pinning it down so uh, again a really good design it's the type of design that we see on the homage and the super delight as well 
On the bike, you'll see as standard things like um, mug guards are fitted, the bells, all the you know all the bits and pieces you're probably going to want to buy afterwards. The lights, all of that comes as standard because it's a Riesa Muller, so everything is on there. Next thing to look at, this is where it starts to get um, a little bit more confusing, is the front, the cargo area. So, depending on how you're going to use this bike, there are loads of different options that you can go for. Now, this bike that we've gone for has got something called high sides. So that's the tall sides that we can see there, and it has the tarpaulin top on it. This is brilliant if you're just carrying, you know, camping kit or your stuff you're taking to work every day, or you've got the dog in there. Um, if you're thinking about using this one more for, um, oh, okay, I'm gonna wait. <laughs> you've got to say carrying shopping or sandwiches. Oh yeah, you're shopping not... and sandwiches. Sandwiches, I haven't talked about sandwiches yeah, for just... a while. So this is perfect <laughs> for carrying sandwiches. Do you reckon you could start a sandwich van? Sandwich van, that's what you could do. When I used to have a proper job, the sandwich van would come round about 11 o'clock. Maybe I could start a business. With sa I know, because I'd probably eat them all, wouldn't I? Do you think that's why you like sandwiches so much? Because it was the high point of your terrible day. <laughs> it was, that's exactly <laughs> what it was. God, I used to hate working and now I don't. <laughs> the front of the bike, this is the high sides with the tarpaulin. Um, next option that you can go for is then starting to think uh, maybe you're going to be carrying children or you want your load that you're putting in there more secure or you want waterproof covers. So let's go for more secure stuff. Still using the high sides that we've got on this, you can buy a hard top, which is three sort of pieces that fold back and then it has a locking mechanism on the back. So if you're carrying stuff that is of some sort of value, sandwiches for example, um, you could roll the top over and you could lock it closed. That's one option. Need high sides and then you'd have the locking top. Next option, do away with the tarpaulin. You can actually then have low sides. Low sides are kind of profiled like this, um, just a different shape. It's easier to get in and out of. So if you're a child or a dog, you don't have to jump over the height of this. If you are Alba the dog on this one, it doesn't bother you at all. You're straight over the top, no problem at all. So low sides just make it a little bit more accessible. Then you can get child seats. So you can get two independent child seats with five point harnesses. Reese Muller suggests it's suitable for um, children up to about seven years old. Um, two seats to fit in here. If you went for the load 75, then you would be looking at um, the option of a third seat as well. So a rear facing seat that went in there. So you've got then three kids you could carry in the front. Next option is then you could put a weatherproof cover. So some people, care for their dogs and they want a full weatherproof cover to come up over the top. It's the same weatherproof cover that you would have for your children as well. It's got nice clear windows on it. It's got sides you can clip up during the summer so the air will flow through. Um, that's a really nice option. You can have a glove box. Now I, I've got a little bit of uh, an issue with the glove box but anyway it sits down below the bottom um, of this bike. It's great if you've got kids they can get their feet in there as well or you can store other things. If you're going to ride this bike off road having a glove box that sits down below. Um, I used to have exactly um, this bike in an orange colour. It was lovely but I had the glove box on it. It only took me a couple of times to realise you can't go over the verge on the ed edge of the road without hammering the uh, glove box into it. So um, glove box really nice option if you're going to be riding on the road. If you're thinking off, off road riding just don't bother with the glove box. You've got plenty of space here. Um, other options on the front there's probably loads that i've forgotten what we'll do when we get to do our review of the load 75 in a couple of months when it comes in um, i'll run through all of those specifications because we've built that bike with absolutely everything so about two months from now you'll see another review very very high specification bike with everything on it this bike is rated to carry a total of 200 kilograms that 200 kilograms has to include 36 kilograms of bike. You can have a maximum of 65 kilograms of load in the front, whatever that might be, children, bags, camping stuff, dogs. Um, the rider weight is a maximum of 110 kilograms. 
and then the weight that you can put on the rear rack is 15 kilograms. So if you think of all those, the rider 110, 65 in here, 15 on the back there, um, add all those things up, that mustn't come, oh, plus the bike at 36 kilograms, all of those numbers mustn't add up to more than 200 kilograms because this bike is rated for 200 kilograms, which is pretty impressive. 65 kilograms in the front there, probably going to cover absolutely everything that you want. Um, and I, I like the idea that you can buy a pannier bag to go, or pannier rack to go on the back, just in case you couldn't get enough in the front already. Based on Rufus's review of it, it obviously turns out that Rufus is really miserable about his bike. <laughs> and he likes to complain about several things. So here's the things that he doesn't like about his bike. And it's only right that we should share them with you because he's ridden this now for three, four years, something like that, and pretty much destroyed it. So he knows what goes wrong on them. Um, and he's made some really valid points, which um, you need to know. If you're gonna buy a cargo bike, um, it does have some limitations. First limitation. These bikes are not the size of a bike. So first of all, what you're gonna find is that they're absolutely brilliant if you're gonna ride it from your home. So if you're gonna ride it as a car replacement um, and you're gonna to go to work and you're gonna go out to the woods and you're lucky to have places like this around you, you know, you, you can't beat it. If you think that you're gonna suddenly just chuck it in the back of the car and then take it off to go to the park for a ride, it's, that's not gonna work. These things don't fit in cars, they, you know, they're big bikes. Next thing is, um, because of the weight of them and the weight that you're gonna be carrying, they can be really harsh on chains. So you're gonna be putting a lot of power through that chain from the motor and from yourself to push the weight that you've got. And you can chew through chains pretty quickly. And when a chain snaps, um, you're then left abandoned in the middle of nowhere and you're pushing because you're not gonna get, as Rufus said, your mum's not gonna come and pick you up. <laughs> so um, bear that in mind. So if you are going for things like the chain and cassette, um, maintenance is gonna be really, really important. These have got to be in tip top condition because when it goes wrong, it properly goes wrong. Um, the alternative to that is to then go for a belt drive with something like a roll-off hub. Really, really lovely, very uh, reliable, but again, you've got to check and you've got to make sure that you're, you're looking after it well. Um, other things, we want to go and do big tours on these bikes. So we want to sort of go, we're, we're down in the Cotswolds, we want to head up to the Lake District and do all that sort of thing. You're not going to get this on a train. <laughs> if you turn up and stand at the side of the train, waiting for the bike park, 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 part of the train they're probably going to tell you to go swing your up and start riding so um, you're not going to find you're going to get these on trains and stuff so they're very much around your house unless you've got a van uh, they slot lovely into the back of things like you know the t5s t6s all those types of vans i got um my volkswagen van it fits in nice and easily diagonally across that um, that's the best way to transport these if you want to disappear on long tours thinking about the fun of these bikes I rode one of these for one year um, and I rode it every day to work. Uh, mine was the orange one, which was probably the best one they ever made. Um, it was the orange version of this with the roll-off hub um, and it was so much fun and I would almost go so far as to say it was more fun than all the other bikes because you could do all the stuff that you could do. So you could do all the off-road riding, but then you could just lob stuff in the front. Um, you know, you can take your dog with you, you can go camping. Um, everywhere you go, when I first started riding these, everybody looked at you like you were crazy. Um, I think it was the bike. <laughs> they might have just looked at me and realized I was crazy. Um, and it's just probably one of the most fun bikes you can possibly get. You know, it's gonna get you loads and loads of attention. Um, and I think you can probably see from Rufus's bike, you know, it gets properly, properly used as well. So it's not just a, you know, a pop out at the weekend and have a little play on it. It's a machine that is made to be used to do absolutely everything. And we'll have a look at that in a minute, just so you can see how he's completely destroyed his in three years. Um, but it's still going and it's still really, really good fun. Key thing that we need to do now is we need to measure up. So um, I need to get you all the different measurements of this bike so you know exactly what we're looking at. Everybody phones us up and asks, how deep is that box? How wide is that box? What's the narrowest point? What's the widest point? How wide are the handlebars? How long is the bike? All this sort of stuff. So come on, it's looking dark over there. We've got to get this done. Cool, let's roll then. Are you ready? Okay. Yep. 
So I'm going to get my tape measure out and I'm going to start measuring various different bits and pieces for you. So let's start with the handlebars. These are 62 centimetres wide. They are actually wider than the widest part of the load area. So if your handlebars are going to go through the door, your um, box is going to go through as well. Now I've got all of our filming crap and stuff in the front of here, which we're going to empty out quickly because it's starting to rain. Height to the top part up here, about 58 centimetres. Widest point internally across here is 56. Narrowest point, I think is 52. Oh no, it's less than that. So 46 at the narrowest point. Total length down the bottom, 60 centimetres. It's a load 60, it's gonna be 60 centimetres. Up the top, total width or length of it is 75 at the top. That's gonna to be confusing, isn't it? Um, total length of the bike, okay. I think it's 2440. Let's see if I'm sad enough to have remembered. Ugh. If I go by my tape measure, it says 2.5 meters. So I reckon the spec says 2.440. You can turn that a little bit and you can make it shorter as well. I think that's all the different measurements you need. Just in case you can't tell, it's starting to rain. Um, so we're probably gonna wrap up now. But if you've got any other things that you want to know about this bike, please don't hesitate to pick the phone up um, or send us an email. And we're more than happy to have a chat with you about what is available on this bike. So you might have noticed <laughs> we've had a slight pause in our filming, <laughs> but now the sun's almost back out. I'm getting attacked by midges now. <laughs> but anyway, so we're, we're ready to go again. When you're ready, here we go. Last thing to mention on this bike then is the ABS. So on this new smart system bike, Bosch has released a new ABS 2.0 system. It's a smart, far, per, per, a far smaller system. Uh, the old one used to be a big box that sat up here. There's now a little unit that goes on the front fork. It's been fitted to these load fours um, and it's a really, really good option. It's a few hundred quid, but I think the idea of having that front brake that doesn't wipe out is going to be good. Um, I had my um, older cargo bike that I had didn't have ABS and I went for the road tyres and I was actually riding around here on the, the grass um, and I was going quite rapidly downhill and I very quickly found that if you pulled on the front brake, the front of the bike would start going. So um, having the ABS on there will stop that wheel locking up completely. It's going to be brilliant. If I was to buy myself another one of these now, I would definitely be putting the ABS on the front. That's pretty much a run through of this bike um, as it is. You'll, you'll notice it's very similar, the frame and everything to the old version of the load. And we have got loads of videos about that. So if you want to know more about it, um, go and have a look at some of the load videos that we've already gone. We'll probably put pointers to them everywhere. Um, but yeah, th that's the main updates as we've gone now to the load four, which is what this is. Okay, so personalization. When you buy one of these bikes, probably one of the most fun things about owning them is then making it your own. So it's a real shame to keep it in this pristine sort of view or sort of look, sorry. Um, you need to start adding stuff onto the front and onto the back. These boards here are all made of some sort of funny plastic type stuff, but they're easy to drill. You can fit stuff into them. You can buy replacements. So if you really chew them up and ruin them, you can buy replacements from Maurice and Muller. And the best example of personalization has to be Rufus's bike. So things that Rufus has gone for. So on here, first of all, we've got for a, gone for a smartphone grip. So he can have his phone on here with his sat nav and everything. Rufus has gone for the upgraded cork um, ergon grips. These are definitely to match his, Ber his Birkenstocks. Um, he's got mounts on here for things like uh, GoPros and stuff. So when he's out doing all the rides with Alba, we get to see some great shots and everything. Smartphone grip, I think I mentioned just now. So he's got his sat nav and everything in there. These timber bells, it's like a little cowbell. I'll put it the right way up for him. Here we go. Does this little cowbell thing as you go along. Absolutely superb, love those. Um, speaker, everybody needs a speaker so he can listen to music. Radio 2 all day long he has on this going along. Um, other stuff, so we've got other boxes. That one's empty. I don't know if it's meant to get, it's got a hole in the bottom. That's probably why it's empty. We've got dog leads Sorry. on here. We've got dog bowls and everything. You're then, gonna have to stop, I think, aren't you? Yeah, I'm gonna have to give up. <laughs> Oh. <laughs>
Yeah. Pull it around. Yeah. That's it from us. We've had enough of the rain. We're going home. Uh, we'll get you a bigger review when this load 75 comes in in a couple of months' time and tell you everything. That's it. We're out. Going. Pub. Bye.